Today I want to record some video to demonstrate the capabilities of the stock OEM antennas that come with your Chinese radios. This is the TYT UV8000D and on our tester right now we've got mounted the VHF antenna that comes with the radio. We're going to look at the standing wave ratios on here given the various circumstances and we're going to start with the frequency of 150 megahertz and look at what our standing wave is with that. So I'll hit the transmit and we're looking around 1.52 to 1.6. We'll move it down now to 160 megahertz and we'll see what we get at 160. We're looking at about 5.7. When we come back we're going to move it up to 170. Now we've reset the radio to 170 megahertz and I'm going to hit the push to talk and we'll see what we get for our standing wave ratio on the meter. We're looking at about 10.5 which is quite a high standing wave ratio. You would not want to be subjecting your radio to that especially when it's putting out around 8 watts of power. Now we're going to move over to a tuned antenna and work through those frequencies again. Now we've added our tuned antenna that's center tuned to 170 megahertz, covers a window of 165 to 175. We'll hit the push to talk and see what's happened to our standing wave ratio over the OEM antenna. And we're looking at 3.7 to 3.9. So roughly we've uh, cut it down to one third of what the standing wave ratio was there. Next I'm going to move it over to 160 and see where we go. Now we've mounted the antenna that's center tuned for 160 and we'll see what happens. We're looking at from it starts out at 1.8 around 2.3 so we're seeing that there is a difference in uh, the uh, tuned antennas as opposed to the stock OEM antenna when you're getting much about the 150 range. So um, we'll keep moving on here and try a few other things. Now let's do some forward power tests and we're going to start again with the OEM antenna and we're going to see how much power is going forward and then we're going to have a look and see how much power is reflected. Uh, we'll start with 150 and we see here we've got forward power of about 7.8 on 150. We're going to change to 160 and we'll see here we've got forward power of about 10.8, 10.7. And then we're going to change this over to um, no, we're not, we won't go to 170 yet. We'll do the reflected power now. And we're going to start with reflected power, which is the power coming back, reflected from the antenna due to a standing wave. And we're going to do that at 150. And we see we're about 0.3 on 150 for reflected power. And we'll see here we're about 5.3 for reflected power on 160 and now we're going to move that to 170 and let's see what we get reflected on 170 we get about 5 reflected on 170 and let's see what our forward power on 170 is forward power on 170 is about 7.3 that's what we're looking at for how this OEM antenna can handle the power going through it and we're seeing here uh, the reflected power is the one of interest it's an acceptable reading at 150 but when you get up to 160 or 170 you're losing about half your power to um, the reflected wave coming back in terms of the standing wave.
which uh, isn't good for reaching very far distances and it's definitely not good for your radio. Let's now see what can happen if you go over to the tuned antenna. Okay, to make my life simpler, I'm going to start where I left off at the 170 megahertz range and we're going to look at the forward power that we're going to get with a tuned antenna that's tuned, center tuned for the 170 mark and look at the forward power which is about 8 watts. Now we're going to switch it over to reflected power and see what comes back. We're looking at about 2.8 Last time I did it, I got 2.7. So, as you recall, we got 5 back with the OEM antenna, and we're about a little more than half of that with the tuned. So, that means that we've basically got more going forward. It's getting out of the tuned antenna. Again, we're about eight on that we were about uh, 7.3 with the OEM antenna now we're gonna move over and try it at 160 I'll just come back and when I now we're going to look at the forward power and reflected power for the antenna that's tuned at 160 and compare that to the OEM antenna that we tested previously starting with forward power we're looking at a reading of about 7.6 to 7.8 which is lower in fact than the OEM antenna and that's due to the velocity factor of the IPX6 dual wall coatings on there uh, that we're using to make these antennas the same as what uh, the Navy SEALs and uh, Marines are using on some of theirs. However you will see the justification for that I believe when we look at the reflected power and I'm going to do that right now again this will be the reflected power on the 160 megahertz antenna and we're looking at 1.3 to 1.25 reflected power now that is a uh, significantly different than the 5.2 that was reflected from the OEM antenna and more than justifies the use of the dual wall heat shrink tubing which uh, has the significant velocity factor to it but the overall advantages are apparent between using the tuned antenna and the OEM. I'm not doing the 150's now because they are almost even when it comes to these various tests again then the OEM antenna would be suitable at the 150 mark if durability was not your consideration However, uh, with the tuned antennas we use, for example, they are much more durable with their IPX6 rating, and uh, that alone would justify the use of it other than uh, short-term field use conditions. Now we're going to do some tests on the UHF band, comparing the OEM stock dual band antenna that comes with the TYT radio, as opposed to a UHF quarter wave antenna that is tuned to around 465 center tune. The reason for that is for it to be suitable for FRS channels that are commonly used. We're going to start out at 465 megahertz and look at the reflected power from the OEM antenna and that is around 1.25 and then we're going to move it over to forward power and again forward power at 465 megahertz about 6.1 now we're going to move over to 420 megahertz and look at forward power on 420 and we're looking at about 7.8 forward power and now we're going to look at what's reflected at 420 megahertz with the OEM antenna and we're looking at a reflective power of about 4.2 to 4.3 when we come back we will then have a look at the tuned antenna and see how it stacks up now we're moving on to the tuned UHF antenna and we're going to start where we left off with the last one to make my life simple 
and it's going to be the reflected power at 420 megahertz and that's our round 4.8 it's showing us for the reflected power. Going to move up to forward power and on that we're looking at 9.8 for forward power and now we're going to move up to 465 megahertz where this antenna is tuned to and we're looking at forward at power 7.5 last time I checked it, it was 7.8 and let's see what our reflected power is at 465 with the tuned antenna 1.1 so what we've ended up with here is the tuned antenna shows more forward power uh, the OEM was 6.1 this is at 465 the tuned at 7.8. At 420 the OEM was showing a forward power of 7.8 whereas the tune was showing forward at 9.8. On the reflected power we had less reflected power at on 465 from the tuned antenna and it was a little more at 420 which would make sense because that antenna is not tuned to that also take in mind that that's a quarter wave I'm not sure what the longer whip for the dual band is uh, velocity factor would be about the same for both of them and also don't consider those readings to be absolute readings for this uh, digital spot meter the red spot or red dot meter uh, but what we can assume is that our relative ratios are consistent especially given the time frame that we've been working within and that's what we're looking at for purposes of this demonstration finally I thought it might be interesting before we conclude to uh, have a quick look at what the standing wave ratio might be between these two UHF antennas on the diversity of those two channels between 420 and 465 going to start out looking at the standing wave ratio for the OEM stock antenna at 420 megahertz and we see that's about 6.7 which uh, is not something that we would really write home to mom about and when we go up to 465 we see we've got a standing wave ratio of about 2.6 which is much better now I'm going to change the antennas if you'll bear with me for a minute I'm going to put the tuned uh, quarter wave UHF smiley on and we're going to look at the standing wave ratio at 465 which is about its center tuning point and we've got a 2.3 standing wave ratio which is better still and now we move back into 420 and we got a 5.9 standing wave ratio which would be to ex be expected given that this is a center tuned antenna and it's tuned to the 465 because again that's what we would be using for FRS so to summarize it would appear that if you want to use the stock antennas that come with the radio and you want to do so on VHF around 150 that would be acceptable it would not be a good idea to be using the OEM stock antenna anywhere much greater than the 150 let's say between 155 and 175 it's inadvisable to be using that antenna for reasons of the standing wave reflected power and your forward power not to mention uh, how rugged it would be uh, the tuned antennas are better and uh, if you have the IPX6 there's a higher velocity factor due to the dual wall coating which is offset by its field life when in use for guiding or search and rescue purposes there's that in a nutshell and the radio that this was tested on was the TYT 8000D which is purported to be a 10 watt radio a lot of tests that I've seen on the internet 
point to it being more ris realistically around 8, whereas some people have said that they can tweak it to achieve the 10. I'm just going to call it an 8 watt for the time being on VHF and um, maybe a 4 to 5 on UHF. That's about it for that one. Thanks for watching.